and welcome to the Panther Report. I'm Arianne Johnson. And I'm Carl Eckwartzel, and we are excited to present the first Panther Report episode of 2012. Oh yes, Carl. It's mm -hmm. not just a new semester, but a whole new year for everyone. And we all know what comes with every new year. New semester and new teachers. Thus more work? Well, yes, but I was referring to something else. A fresh set of reminders that everyone else's love life is better than mine? Um, no, Carl. I'm talking about New Year's resolutions. Oh, well, what took you so long to say that? You have to learn how to get your words out, Arianne. That's what all reporters must do. Um, why, thank you, Carl. I'll have to keep that in mind. But while I'm thinking about that, let's turn to reporter Bhavna Diplup Kumar to discover more about New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Every new year brings a freshness of promise, hope, and the opportunity to change something in our lives more in tune to what we wish to be. With the dawning of another year, it's that time again, the annual New Year's resolutions. Whether resolutions are to shed some pounds, eat healthy, find a job, or even smoke that last cigarette, people all over are making some type of unique and new resolution for the new year. But somehow, only a few have the relentlessness to keep up with their resolutions. How are students here at GSU keeping up with their resolutions? Let's see what the students have to say. My New Year's resolution is to passionately and authentically as possible glorify God and by being satisfied in Him through Christ Jesus. So that's my goal and um, that's what I'm trying to do. My New Year's resolution is to study earlier in the daytime so I can go to bed earlier at night. Hi, my New Year's resolution was to save money, and I've been doing good with it so far. Um, I did not purchase anything from the cafeteria today, unlike my friend who purchased a Chick-fil-A milkshake. Uh, no, no resolutions, because that would imply imperfection. Just kidding. Okay, so then um, are you planning any resolutions for 2013, perhaps? Uh, no, I've never really been a resolution person. I'm here in the fitness center located in the Georgia State Recreational Center with Jason, our personal trainer graduate assistant. Okay, so basically this semester um, we've definitely had a lot more people come in and sign up with us compared to, um, you know, the fall, this past fall. And it seems that we, I mean, we definitely have people that are coming in to lose weight. Um, I personally don't have as many clients that are coming in to lose weight. I more so have people that are coming in to put on a little bit of weight, um, shape their bodies up a little bit more. We also have had actually some record days of people coming in and using the facility. So that's a good thing. So this year we've had a lot of students who really would like to prepare home cooked meals and that's their main New Year's resolution is to try to cook at home more. You know, you don't necessarily know how to cook at home when you're so busy. So we've been just answering a lot of questions on how to prepare healthy meals at home. Another thing that we've been coming, running into with New Year's resolutions is um, how to eat around a busy schedule. As you know, we have a lot of students who come in with full days and they're with their workouts and with jobs and they just don't know how to eat healthy around their schedules. Last but not least, here are some of the most common resolutions we found amongst GSU students. Earning better grades, saving money, trying something new, enjoying life to the fullest, and getting organized. GSU Rec Center, Bhavna D. Panther Report. I have a New Year's resolution that I want to keep for every year. I am? Mm -hmm. What's that? To constantly feed my hunger for knowledge. I want to learn more about all the cultures and heritages of the world. Okay, you can certainly do that by keeping up with the different heritage months that occur throughout the year. Oh, I already know all about them. I plan to learn a new fact for every day of each heritage month, starting with February, which is Black History Month. I've already learned some interesting facts. Okay, like what? Well, did you know that Victor Blanco was the first black mayor of San Antonio, Texas, when Texas was still a part of Mexico in 1809? No, I did not know mm. that. What else have you learned about black history? A great deal. And our reporter, Asha Johnson, has more information to share. Hi, I'm Asha Johnson. The month of February is known as Black History Month in the U.S. and Canada. What many people may not know is that this month was once, in fact, a week. The second week of February became known as Negro History Week in 1926. The original idea was that by honoring the accomplishments of African Americans, it would inspire other people to achieve greater things in the future. Now let's test what a few of our GSU students know about black history. 
Do you know who the first tennis player was to win the U.S. Open? Sorry, the first black tennis player. Um, you got me stumped. Arthur Ashe. <laughs> Do you know who the first wealthiest black woman millionaire was? That's a tough question. The first wealthiest black woman. Probably Madam C.J. Walker. Yes, correct. What was the importance of the 13th Amendment? Wasn't that the amendment to like free slaves? Yes, it was. And do you know the president? Thomas Jefferson? It was actually Abe Lincoln. We're in the gallery lounge, and we actually have Dr. Derby, whose photos are featured in the lounge today. Hello, Dr. Derby. Good afternoon. How are you, Asha? I'm good. Would you like to explain a few of your photos today? Certainly. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that this exhibit is called Sociocultural Integration and the Early Days of Salsa Dance and Music in Atlanta. And many people were involved in it. And right now we have photographs. I have over 65 photographs here that depict the various places and people that were involved. So would you say that African Americans have had a drastic effect on dancing and music culturally? Oh, definitely. Uh, you can just look at the photographs and see. And, and this, it's well known that salsa dance was uh, rooted or is rooted in African music and dance. Um, the photographs also show how um, those of us who were involved in salsa dance early in the 90s became very good friends. And we would have salsa uh, dance and music at all of the activities that we would have celebrations, weddings, birthday parties, holidays, uh, as well as, you know, in the private clubs and restaurants. Regardless of a person's ethnicity, it is clear that as students, we can all come together and celebrate Black History Month. And I'm Asha Johnson with the GSTV Panther Report. We've got one more Black History fact that piqued my interest. Okay, what might that be? I've become particularly interested in the civil rights movement and how much work had to be done in order for the black community to get the right to vote. That's right. It was quite a fight, but not only a fight regarding voting in America's history. Women and the younger generation alike have fought for their right to vote as well. They surely believe voting to be one of the most important human rights in America. Certainly. And with elections coming up this year, mm -hmm. more students should probably consider the historical fights. Some students may not be aware of the process of voting seeing that this would be the first time voting in an election. That's right. Reporter Marquia Thomas has more information on just how many students at Georgia State are truly informed. According to the Secretary of Government, approximately 500,000 citizens between the ages of 18 and 24 are considered active voters. However, here at Georgia State University, that may not be the case. Some students are finding it difficult to trust politicians. If, uh, if I had my choice and uh, he was still in the race, Herman Cain would be him. Uh, not a big fan of Romney. I think we don't need politicians in the office. I hate politicians, and he just reminds me of a politician. While others just don't have the time to educate themselves on the primary elections. I'm not politically aware of the current situation, so pertaining to me, I'm not really involved in all the politics. I haven't gotten the chance to actually get into everything. Although Georgia State students are less than enthused about the primary elections, that doesn't stop the college Republicans for standing up for what they believe in. Really important that students go out and vote um, at all the major elections and even the ones in between and special elections because for the most part, Washington's votes are derived from the older generation and we really need to put our own thoughts into the works and that can be through voting. If you are not registered to vote and you are interested in voting, you can simply go to rockthevote.com. Reporting from Atlanta, Georgia, Marquia Thomas for the Panther Report. Seems to me, Carl, that our first episode of 2012 has become central to a theme of knowledge. Well, it is always important to be informed, Arianne. With more information, we are able to make important decisions to our lives, communities, and country. That's right. Good point, Carl. There is a lot that happens in our cities and communities, and some may be unaware of it all. Such as the potential closing of an influential homeless shelter in Atlanta. 
With many homeless people in the city claiming the streets as their beds, this closure could majorly affect the city, not just the homeless population. We have more on that with reporter Oana Ilioaya. Hi Panthers, I'm Juana Iluaya here for Panther Report and today we're outside of Metro Atlanta Task Force for the Homeless. There's been talks recently about the homeless shelter closing down and we're here to find out how it would affect not only the homeless that reside here but also GSU students. So if Metro Atlanta Task Force closes, how is it going to affect the homeless that are living here? Well actually it would be a tremendous effect because it's a highly recommended resource building and I feel that it would, it would be detrimental for the people who are here, the clients and recipients that are here, uh, men and also uh, women and women who have kids. Um, the whole purpose of this specific shelter is to be a stepping stone for people to get themselves to be able to live efficiently with their lives. And for this shelter to be closed is taken away from the stepping stones that could um, make a person's life more productive in, and also in society. Where do you think that everyone's going to go? I mean, if they don't have this place to stay, where, where are they going to go? Other homeless shelters in Atlanta? There are other homeless shelters and other resources, but um, this one is a main uh, nucleus of all the other places that they have here in the city. And even though they're compound in one unit base, um, this one is the largest and the biggest. And it's a 24-hour shelter. So therefore, the other shelter that has those guidelines in that certain uh, open and closing uh, time periods through the day, which would leave people out there in the streets. This is a 24-hour uh, shelter system, so it will help. Even though you get resources, you still have a point of uh, access where it's that you can study and also get your paperwork gathered and take care of other amenities. Do you agree with United Way coming in and trying to change? Do you think that they can make a, a difference for the better in, in this community? Oh, yes. Uh, the United Way is, 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 is established. Uh, they, they have. Um, certain national guidelines, uh, so, uh, they, 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 they will definitely make a difference. Something has to be done. Again, you cannot just love people to death. And that's, that's, a, that's a classic example of what's going on here at the Task Force for the Homeless. So how would you feel if one of the biggest homeless shelters in Atlanta closed down? Oh, that would be terrible. I know because there's so many homeless people around here and without them having anywhere to go, I feel like it would be forced upon the students of Georgia State to kind of do more and to put out a lot more. And I feel like also the crime rate might go up. Juana Iliwaya, Panther Report. As a leading research university, Georgia State places knowledge high in terms of importance. Students on campus have countless opportunities to gain knowledge outside of the classroom with many events, such as the Distinguished Speaker Series that features individuals in the field that have the experience and knowledge to pass to other students who want to listen. In the year alone, our campus has been blessed with the presence of astronaut Mark Kelly and journalist Lisa Ling, who have been interviewed by Panther Report's own Ariana Johnson and Maria Trigueros. Hi, my name is Ariana Johnson. I'm with GST. So you're the TV. Yes, okay. we're the TV at Georgia State right. University News Station. So you were talking about 380 days um, you've been on this journey as caregiver yes. for your mm -hmm. wife. Um, everything's been so public from the moment she opened her eyes to her first interview. What's that like uh, on top of the pressure of knowing the, the percentage, the chance that she had to recover? Did it help or hinder her recovery, um, the well, public think, watching her? Well, it might have seemed very public from the outside. But from, from me, you know, being with her every day, you know, those things happen, like, you know, on a regular basis, kind of maybe every month. Um, but I think it helped her to know that there were, was a lot of interest she didn't realize that at first. Even after we would tell her, she'd be like, I, I don't believe you that people you know, really know what's going on with me. Uh, but they do, and when she found, you know, really learned what the interest was and saw how many cards and letters and how much support there was out there for her and how much people cared about her recovery, I think it helped her. You know, and, you know I think to some extent now she feels, occasionally she'll feel like she let people down and I've got to tell her, no, it's not the case. I mean, people are behind you, and they know you'll be back someday. Absolutely. Now, you decided to retire October 1st, 2011, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, you have this book now, mm -hmm. Gabby, A Story of Courage and Hope. What mm -hmm. message do you want to, to present? What do you think will resound with the American people 
with the publication of this book? Well, I think you know, I think the message in the book is it's a positive one. It's it's one of um, you know that you can recover from something pretty horrible if you remain positive and you know have a good support structure around you. Um, I think you, you know there's certainly some moments in the book that are kind of sad, but overall it's uplifting and I think it's funny. And um, you know we wanted to just you know mostly me I wanted to chronicle you know what was happening before I forget. You know if you give me a couple you know, I can't remember what I did yesterday. So I mean I didn't put all that stuff down on paper early. It wasn't going to happen. Uh, so I wanted you know people to be able to understand Gabby and you know what, what happened to her and what her recovery was like, and she did too. So we worked. It also gave us something to do together during this period of time. Absolutely. Yes. And, yes. and for you, this you. wonderful, unique occupation that many will never have, mm -hmm. being an astronaut. What do you What do you plan? I know you're retired, but do you plan to have any more connections with NASA? Um, partner up with your brother? Yeah, um, not yet. I mean, I've looked at maybe you know doing some consulting. And I have done a little bit of that with, with some companies out there. There's a company in California that's doing some interesting work called SpaceX. That's building a, you know, a, a, a rocket. They've already built it, and they have a spacecraft, and they're planning to bring cargo first to the space station, and then people. So there's some exciting stuff going on. It's just unfortunate that we had to retire the space shuttle before we were able to build something new. And now, and I think a lot of people understand that, you know, there's no U.S. spacecraft to get people into space anymore. When well, we want to go up to our space station, we have to go on a Russian rocket. Now, just because this program ended, that doesn't mean that's the end of programs. That's right. No could a lot, be yeah, there, there's this misconception out here, like, you know, NASA's <laughs> closed. That's the farthest thing from the truth. I mean, we have people in orbit right now, orbiting the Earth, in a, in a very large and capable space station with an inter international crew, and uh, that's going to continue and we're going to continue to do great things in space. Hopefully, at some point, we go back to the moon or send people to Mars. I mean, those are exciting things that, not only from the, um, from the perspective of driving our economy and, and creating new technologies, but I think it's also inspiration for kids to go into math and science and you know, technology education, which is really important to our economy. Absolutely. And speaking of inspiration, what message are you going to try to deliver to Georgia State University students today? Well, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a message of, of hope and also a message of, you know, some things that I've learned in a 25-year career in the Navy and NASA. I think some things that can, you know, help them in their future careers, no matter what it might be. It's fantastic. So that's the plan. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure meeting you. You're welcome. Pleasure. Now we move on to Macy Lister for your political news. Hey Panthers, we're just 10 days away from Super Tuesday, and while that probably isn't nearly as exciting as Fat Tuesday, I'm sure there's some bored college student out there who has created a drinking game to play during all of this political madness. Like, hmm, maybe a swig every time Gingrich or Santorum makes a negative comment about Romney, or every time Romney asserts that he's a businessman rather than a typical politician. So, with 10 days to go, here are 10 things to know before heading to the polling booth and earning that prize peach sticker. Number one, Rick Perry, Michelle Bachman, and Herman Cain are out. If I could dance right now, I would do it, but I can't dance. Number two, Newt Gingrich will be campaigning in and around Metro Atlanta tomorrow, hoping to stir up that last bit of support here in his home state. Gingrich hopes to win Georgia, and it is crucial. Number three. Georgia has 76 electoral votes up for grabs. That's the most out of any state participating in Super Tuesday primaries. So really, Super Tuesday is crucial for not only Newt, but Romney and Santorum as well. It is likely that after the polls close, we will know who will be nominated to run against Obama. Number four, you can request an absentee ballot up until March 2nd. So if you're registered to vote in your hometown, feel free to submit the request and get your civic engagement on. Five, Mitt Romney is still the likely front runner, but that could all change when the more conservative South takes, makes its voice heard on Tuesday. Things could get messy, though, between Gingrich and Santorum supporters, as both are decidedly more conservative than Romney, and this is causing some splitting of the votes. This primary season is proving to be as juicy as this season of Jersey Shore. 
if you don't care about who gets the Republican nomination, and let's be honest here, most of us probably don't, there is an important referendum set to appear on the ballot that will most definitely have an effect on life here in the city. Seven. So I'm cheating a little here because seven, eight, and nine are really all one thing. But for the sake of keeping with this theme of ten, here we go. Number eight. The municipal option sales tax, or most, will appear on the ballot. Voters will get to decide on whether or not they'd like to continue the sales tax, which currently helps pay for the millions of dollars worth of work being done on our outdated, and we're talking Civil War era here, sewer systems. Nine, Atlanta sales tax would rise to 8% if the tax were continued, but if voters did not pass the tax, water bill rates could rise up to 30%. Atlanta water bills are already one of, if not the most expensive in the entire country. And these federally mandated works projects are expected to cost another $478 million. The continuance of the tax, however, would raise around $400 to $440 million for the projects. VT Dubs, even the Fulton County Tax Commissioner supports continuing the tax. 10. And last but not least, it'll be warm. I'm not a meteorologist, but the Weather Channel says there's a slight chance of rain and temperatures will be in the mid-60s, so why not get out and vote? Well, that's all for now. I'm Macy Lister, and you're watching Panther Report. Hey, GSU. I'm Morgan Mahone, and this is the entertainment news for the Panther Report. The biggest story of the week is the passing of legendary singing superstar Whitney Houston. She was laid to rest on Saturday in her hometown of Newark, New Jersey, after being found unresponsive in the bathtub of her Beverly Hills Hilton suite. Houston was also one of the world's best-selling music artists, having sold over 170 million albums, singles, and videos worldwide. She released seven studio albums and three movie soundtrack albums, all of which have sold diamond, multi-platinum, platinum, or gold certification. Whitney is truly a musical legend and will be missed by many. Last week at the Grammys, the stars were out and shining, but no star shone brighter than Grammy darling Adele. Things couldn't be better for the British songstress, who brought home the trifecta of Album of the Year, Song of the Year, and Record of the Year, plus three others, bringing her grand total to six. Adele might have been rolling in the deep, but now she's rolling in the dough. To date, her sophomore album, 21, has sold more than 17 million albums worldwide. The musicians had their night, and Tinseltown is coming out to play. Academy Awards for Outstanding Film Achievements of 2011 will be presented on Sunday, February the 26th, at the Kodak Theater at Hollywood and Highland Center, and televised live by the ABC Television Network. Some of the nominees are Best Picture, The Artist, The Descendants, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, the Help, Hugo, Midnight in Paris, Moneyball, The Tree of Life, and War Horse. For actor in a leading role, Demi and Bashir, George Clooney, Jean Dujardin, Gary Oldman, and Brad Pitt. For actress in a leading role, Glenn Close, Viola Davis, Rooney Mara, Meryl Streep, and Michelle Williams. For directing, The Artist, The Descendants, Hugo, Midnight in Paris, and the Tree of Life. GSU, it's time for your 30-second reality recap. On Jersey Shore, a grenade explodes in Polly's face in the form of a super stalker. Jenny gets no love from Roger, and Snooky clearly failed geography in school. On Real Housewives of Atlanta, black baby orphans that supposedly Kim Zosiak won't hold can't make this group of women get along. On the season premiere of Chloe and Lamar, Kim cries over Chris, Lamar almost cries over Rob moving out the house. And what's reality TV without a good motorboating? Okay, Panthers, next week is spring break, so put your books down and hit the town. In style, of course. If the movie It didn't leave you with clown nightmares, the circus is in town. Catch the Universal Circus and the Barnum and Bailey Circus in their last weekends here. Show up an hour early to Barnum and Bailey for the all access pre show. See animals up close. Visit with performers, get autographs, try on costumes, and enjoy the circus fun. You can catch Barnum and Bailey at the arena at the Gwinnett Center and the Universal Circus in the Turner Field parking lot. Catch comedian Shane Moss, the 25th and the 26th, at the Laughing Skull Lounge next door to the Vortex Midtown. In 2010, Shane had his first TV special. Comedy Central presents Shane Moss. 
For my fellas who may have dropped the ball on Valentine's Day, I think I can help you get out the doghouse. Buckhead Restaurant Week runs from the 25th through the 4th. Enjoy Buckhead's finest fare at exceptional prices with prefix A, three course menus consisting of appetizers, main course, and dessert for $25 or $35 per person. Radiohead will be at the Phillips Arena on the 1st. Don't miss this opportunity to be a part of the band's first extensive stateside trek since 2008. Radiohead and dinner and Buckhead might even get you through the front door, you dirty dog. Whatever you do over spring break, Panthers, make sure to stay warm and safe. I'm Morgan Mahone, and that was your entertainment news. And here's Chanel Walker with sports. Thanks, Morgan. Hey, Panthers. Chanel Walker here with the Sports Beat. In football news, for the second time in four years, Eli Manning and the New York Giants and Tom Brady with the New England Patriots met again on the biggest stage in sports, Super Bowl 46. This year, the Super Bowl took place in Indianapolis, Indiana, with the Patriots earning home advantage because of their record in the regular season of 13-3. With a final score of 21-17, the New York Giants took it all and did the NFL ended the 2011-2012 NFL season with a bang. In GSU football news, unfortunately, our team here at Georgia State was not as victorious in their sophomore season, ending with a record of three wins and eight losses. Staying hopeful, the upcoming season will start on August 30th. So for all you football fans, you can sit back, relax, and watch some basketball. NBA season is finally in progress after a 161-day lockout, leaving only 66 games out of the 82 in the regular season. Along with this delay came interesting trades, retirements, and hidden talent. The longtime coach for the LA Lakers, Phil Jackson, retired, and with the trade of their key players, Lamar Odom, Kobe Bryant has, has to become acquainted with the new head coach, Mike Brown, and a different roster. Linsanity has taken over the country the past few weeks. The New York Knicks has a new star, and his name is Jeremy Lin. He has become a sensation in the league, setting records in multiple areas. The Georgia State men's basketball team started the season out with an 11-game winning streak and is continuing to have a successful season. Unfortunately, our women's basketball team is having a little bit of a struggle but still playing hard. Go out and support our team. And remember, if you cannot attend the game, you can also tune in to WRAS 88.5 and listen to the games. Spring is right around the corner, and that means MLB season will be starting on March 28th. So be sure to tune in and watch the Atlanta Braves versus the New York Yankees. Meanwhile, our baseball season here at Georgia State has already begun and we are off to a great start. Be sure to tune into the next game on Saturday at 1 p.m. here in Atlanta at the GSU Baseball Complex and support our team. This was Chanel Walker with your Sports Beat. Hey Carl, what's the difference between a mustache and a black hole? Well, a black hole isn't attached to your face and growing from your face. <laughs> We all know that a mustache is the gift that keeps on giving by creating a more dignified and aesthetically appealing population. But now that killer stash can do even more. It can help fight a killer. Mm -hmm. Whoever thought that your mustache, or if you're among the genetically whiskered challenge, your efforts in the field of mustachery could help kids with cancer? Well, now it can. Mustaches versus cancer. It's a two-month mustache-a-thon where each participant solicits donations on behalf of their beautifully bristled upper lip. And in the end, donating all the earnings to the pediatric department at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. I'm doing my part. Rare. Here at Panther Report, we're reminding you to grow for a cause. Well, we have successfully kicked off season four of The Panther Report, which airs on Channel 91 in University Housing and online as a live stream at gstvonline.org. To view this and any past episodes, be sure to visit our YouTube channel, GSTV Panther Report. I'm Carl Eckwurzel. And I'm Ariane Johnson, signing off. Thank you for watching, watching The Panther, Panther Report. Report. Grow your stashes. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Let me check yours. Oh.